on this episode. I can't hear anything. Are you sure you've got a pulse? Okay, I'm going to start compressions again. This puppy's situation is so critical. I'm quite concerned that she might pass away shortly. Keep going. Her foot just seems to have disappeared. And since then, it's just kind of been going downhill. Here's the problem. The leg is actually rotting. So I'm trying to navigate with this shell in the way. I'm really worried that we may not be able to save this leg. Uh, she's a bit wobbly. There's a bit more than just arthritis going on here. The older you get, the more precious you get. That's where most of the problems are, in the spine. I don't want to be the last trip to the vet for that dog. Okay. At SASH in Western Sydney, Alex and the emergency team are faced with a desperate situation. CPR yes or? 13-week-old puppy Lucy has been rushed in, suspected of having the deadly and highly contagious canine parvovirus. Got an IV in? Parvovirus affects usually young puppies because they don't have good immune systems. There is a vaccination for it, uh, and when they're not vaccinated, unfortunately, this virus can be invariably fatal if not treated very quickly and aggressively. We need the end title as well. Can someone get the end title? Some of the symptoms of parvovirus include vomiting and extreme diarrhea, which can cause rapid dehydration and damage the intestines and immune system. ECG on, please. When a pet presents to us and we suspect that there could be parvovirus, we do need to do a patient side test, similar to a COVID test. And while we're waiting for those results, sometimes the animals can be quite critical. Can someone feel for a pulse? Little Lucy is fighting for her life. Monitor on. Her heart has stopped. And Alex and her emergency team are working frantically to try to save her. Who's on next? Who's on next for compressions? I'll, if you want to I'll listen. We've got a heartbeat, we've got a heartbeat. Okay, good. Let's put this easy. Keep breathing. On. Can someone feel for a pulse? If you can't feel a pulse, we might have pulses electrical. No, we no pulses. No, are you sure? They were very weak to start. Okay, well, I'll freeze and you can't feel for a pulse. Yep. Uh, yeah, we got a pulse. It's just very fast, yeah. Yep. We're just going to keep listening to that heart. Our end title's dropping. Do you want adrenaline? You got IV? Yeah. Okay. Just give 0.05 of a mil. Okay, I'm going to start compressions again. Can I get some? Little Lucy is barely clinging to life. We'll do another round of compressions. This puppy's situation is so critical, I'm quite concerned that she might pass away shortly. I can't compress any harder. The chest is collapsing. Being a good girl, Tootie. Bit worried, well, aren't you, bub? In Sydney's West, Robin has come in to see Rob, worried about her former show dog, Matilda. We'll make you better, sweetie. In recent months, the 10-year-old Portuguese water dog has had more and more trouble walking. Good girl. She's getting a bit weaker in the back leg. She'd walk and then she'd stop, like that hurt. When she runs really big steps, her legs go from under her. Hey, Robin, how are you? Good, thanks. You've got the old girl here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Tildy. How are you, darling? How's my girl? Come on through, we'll have a look at her. Come on, sweetness. Yeah, she's a bit wobbly. Yeah. Dear old thing. It always worries me when they bring in an old dog because I don't want to be the last trip to the vet for that dog. What's been going on with her? Her legs are still getting a little bit weaker. Her only problem is like me date of birth <laughs> <laughs> so you can feel the creaky old joints that she's got and i know in the past she's had some issues with we've done spine. an x-ray yeah. on her back and yeah. she's got sort of three it's horses just... heads that don't yeah. look right. so good there's a bit more than just arthritis going on here and the spine is not as mobile as it should be we've had matilda on anti-inflammatories for some time now but the spinal column, I think, is degenerating. Oh, dear little old thing, aren't you? 
which the more it. precious. The older you get, the more precious you get. Yes, it is. It's so true. That is very true. Matilda loves everybody and she thinks everybody loves her and she loved the show ring so when she was judged the judges would go over and it was like oh my new friend but she's not just a show dog she is my love and best friend. So I think we need to take the next step but I don't want to use steroids their end stage of treatment yeah. that's real last you know too many side effects. Okay. I actually bred Matilda myself and she was the tiniest little puppy. She has just been a delight, a joy from the word go. And she just loved being with you doing everything. She loved being a mum and she's a happy girl. But I've always had a little bit of an underlying worry about Matilda. I'd like to do stem cells on her. Yeah. So the process there is to... Well, we make stem cells from her own tissue mm -hmm. and we take some blood from her mm -hmm. and in the laboratory over there, we will process it and inject them back into her. Okay. Stem cells are in our bodies and have been helping repair for a long time. As we get older, the stem cells just become dormant and they have to be mobilised and stimulated and I've had some unbelievable results with stem cells, things that I would have thought, no, it's not going to work. Uncle Wolf can fix you up? You know I always trust your judgment, so... <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's go, Tilde. Good on. girl. Good girl, Tildy. Alrighty. I right, come on. In Atlanta, Georgia, Juliet and her son Jordan have arrived to see Arvid with an unusual pet. How are you today? Hi, how are you? And this is Bedrock. This is Bedrock. I got Bedrock when he was about the size of my palm and he was two months old and now he's seven. Bedrock is an African spurred tortoise. Bedrock is a really fun tortoise. He has a lot of energy. He's very spontaneous and he likes to go running around and he's an escape artist, likes to explore. All right, so the moment of truth is here. I know you've kind of given me a little brief background over the phone, but this is my first time seeing Bedrock, right? She's actually got this really hurt arm. If I'll pull her out. Okay. Let's turn her around. She's very attractive. Yeah, she's got a beautiful show. <laughs> So tell me more about the injury, what happened? She unfortunately got it caught in some mosquito mesh outside of my gazebo and it got wound up really, really tight. It was about 16 hours before I caught it and she actually did really fine for a long time. And it was, this is over a year ago the injury happened and just in the last two or three months, it's been, she's been declining. And when you say declining, she's like not walking on it anymore? She's, she'll, she'll walk on it for food, but she okay. really doesn't want to put the weight on it. It seems to bother her and her foot just seems to have disappeared. And since then, it's just kind of been going downhill. Well, she did fine for a very long time and she had a little bit of a limp and it was maybe a little discomfort, but not something you would see every day. It would be like on, a, on an occasion. Yeah, you can definitely tell that this tissue here is looking devitalized there mm -hmm. and see any way to salvage it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We get some x-rays, we'll get some blood work on her mm -hmm. and try to see if this is something we can kind of rehabilitate and maybe bring back at night. Mm -hmm. Then we may be looking at potential amputation. Right so that she could have a good quality of life because definitely this leg doesn't look good at all. Amputating the leg is obviously the last resort. Resort, you know, and so. Or even see. maybe removing a part of it, if, you know, if it yeah. needs the whole thing taken off. Typically with these guys, because if you leave a stump, and they're It'll able to, continue, it can to continue to get irritated. So usually if we're gonna amputate, we're gonna amputate pretty high up. Right. And then we'll have to maybe put a prosthesis on the bottom of the shell here to kind of, you know, elevate it. Yes. But if we have to amputate, you know, right. I will definitely let you know. And of course, the anesthesia in these guys are very tricky, but that's one thing that we take very seriously. Yes. It's very monitor you know, monitoring them very closely. Right. Yeah. I just want the best for her. She's great. She's gonna do fine. I've had her through thick and thin. So I am really worried about Bedrock's leg because it doesn't look like there's any blood supply going to that leg. It looks like it's been cut off and the leg is actually rotting. 
You can see the skin sloughing and she's definitely in pain. So I'm really worried that we may not be able to save this leg. I'm hoping we can, but realistically, it's not looking good. Oh, you're beautiful. She's super cute. Oh, baby. Have a little sleep for a while. Okay. In Western Sydney, Robin is comforting her beloved dog Matilda before Rob begins stem cell treatment for degenerative bone disease. We'll get started. A stem cell is a basic primitive cell, if you like, that can become any cell in the body you like to repair things and also act as an anti inflammatory. And at the end of this process, it should give her a new lease on life for a while. It's all good, Tildy. All good, darling. Uncle Rob make you better? With the 10-year-old under anaesthetic, Rob will remove tissue from beneath the skin. All good, sweetheart. Stem cells will be harvested from that tissue, processed, then injected back into the most damaged parts of Matilda's body. OK, let's take her into X-ray. Okay, let's do our first one. We need to x-ray every area of the body that requires stem cells. So we take x-rays of all the joints and any other structures that we feel might help with some repair. They're not terrible. They're not the worst joints I've seen, which is good. Let's have a look at the spine. That's where most of the problems are, in the spine. Most of the degeneration is in the actual spinal column. And I'd say that she has degeneration of the spinal cord itself. Very common in old people and old dogs as well. And it's why a lot of people end up in wheelchairs because the spinal cord is no longer functioning the way it should be. Whether the stem cells will help that, I don't know. But we'll give it a try. In Atlanta, Georgia, Arvid and his team are facing challenging amputation surgery on seven-year-old tortoise bedrock. It's going to make you feel better, I promise. That's some really, really good pain control. The thing with these guys, it's tough to do much without anesthesia, and if you get your hand caught between the leg and the shell and they draw that leg back, they can really break your finger and do some damage. These guys are super strong. So we're gonna give them a little sedative to relax them so we can get the x-rays, get the total picture, get the ball rolling with getting Bedrock back to good health. Yeah, let's put her all the way side, lateral. Here's the problem. Definitely there's some lucency changes in the bone. Almost looks like it's like a moth-eaten appearance. Yes, you can see that with cancer, but in this case, I just think it's infection that's gotten into the bone. And you can see the digits look like they're kind of eaten away. So if you look here compared to the normal leg, which is here, you can definitely see the difference. You can see all the digits coming up here, but then on this leg, they all look like they're cut off and the digits, all that looks like it's been eaten away and there's some infection and inflammation in that bone. She's not gonna get that back. So unfortunately, it looks like the next step is to amputate. I know it sounds kind of brutal, but in the end, she's gonna be happier, healthier, pain-free. Hello, Juliet, it's Dr. Edward. Hi, how are you? Hey, so we took the radiographs of bedrock and unfortunately, um, in her leg, and especially in her bones, there definitely looks like there's some inflammation and infection that's kind of eating away at the bone. Uh, you can I see, you can definitely see some bone loss mm -hmm. in some areas where it looks like there's some moth-eaten appearances. So, okay. unfortunately, you know, it looks like we're gonna have to amputate. Right, are you gonna take the whole leg? Yes, we're gonna take the whole leg. I know she's safe in your hands. <laughs> yes, yes, we're gonna take good care of her. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for letting me know. You're very welcome. So you just go up and like this. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're about to place the endotracheal tube so that we can get her induced for anesthesia. So the thing about these guys is that they have a really short trachea. So the tracheal bifurcation is very high as opposed to a dog or a cat. So when you're tubing these guys, you gotta be very careful not to go too far down or you can only oxygenate one side of the lungs and that's not good. So I created a little plastic gadget, if you will, to prevent that. We can uh, just keep the eyes where we can move them. Okay, I'm gonna start compressions again. At the emergency department at SASH in Western Sydney. I can't compress any harder. The chest is collapsing. Vet Alex is fighting to keep Lucy alive after the young pup's heart stopped for a second time. Are we getting fluids in? We need fluids. It's suspected that Lucy has parvovirus, which can be deadly and is highly contagious. Have you got a pulse? Yes, I can't, I can't hear anything. Are you sure you've got a pulse? Yeah, yeah. No, keep going, keep going. At the moment, there's a lot of parvovirus happening in Western Sydney. Uh, there is a reduced amount of people vaccinating their pets against parvovirus, and it does spread from dog to dog contact. And so when people are out and about, it's more likely to spread to, to pets that aren't vaccinated. Someone listen, someone listen. Oh, I can see a heartbeat. There we go. Listen. Yep, I've got a pulse, I've got a pulse. I've got a good pulse, strong. Keep breathing. Okay, that was a breath on her own. That was a breath on her own? Yay, good puppy. Okay. Oh, very good. The team is suddenly optimistic. Have we got a parvo test result yet? Oh, I'm sorry, Papa. But then, devastating news. Test results confirm Lucy does have the deadly virus. The emergency department is being closed immediately to prevent the spread of the killer virus. Parvovirus is incredibly contagious to other dogs and especially in a hospital setting where we have lots of very sick and debilitated animals, young puppies that may not be fully vaccinated, this can spread very easily in the hospital and infect some of our patients. So these are agonal breaths, these are not normal breaths that she's doing at the moment. We've had two cardiac arrests that we've been able to successfully resuscitate now, but we're on the brink of potentially having another arrest. So we need to very closely monitor because this breathing that we're doing at the moment is very concerning. It's brainstem breathing. We just need to be really careful to make sure that she doesn't re-arrest. Uh, Guys, get ready. She might be going again. This is for the processing. In Sydney's Outer West, Rob is extracting blood from Portuguese water dog Matilda as part of the 10-year-old stem cell treatment. That's good, that's good. We've taken blood and from that we get plate-rich plasma. We concentrate it with special solutions and spin it down, centrifuge it, till we just get the platelets. Next, Rob harvests fatty tissue that's rich with stem cells. I use fat that's around what's called the falciform ligament, which is the remnants of the umbilicus, what was left of the tube that connected you to the mother. And that's what I'm after, that fat. We want about 150 grams of fat, and because it's in that spot, I would certainly call it good fat. We get the fat and we dissolve a lot of the fat out of it through a whole lot of different chemicals to leave just the stem cells. And you mix it with a platelet-rich plasma to get concentrated injections that we can put back into her body. We actually have a special machine which counts live stem cells. So we'll know how many stem cells we get from this. A Little bit more here and that will do us. That's good. I love it. 
While I'm finishing the surgery and closing the incision, the platelet-rich plasma is being processed, as is the fat. We get good results with this so far. Every dog that's had this has shown quite a degree of benefit afterwards. So I hope that little Matilda here will be the same. Robin loves her very, very much. It'll be four hours before the stem cell solution will be ready to inject into Matilda. An eternity for her adoring owner. You're always a little bit nervous with an operation, but hopefully it all goes well and she can be her happy, bouncy self again. You awake, darling? Hmm? Hopefully it's going to help you along the way with any ailments you get. Hmm? There's a few things that it could help Matilda with and I get the benefit of my girl maybe getting some little extra TLC to keep her with me for a little bit longer, hopefully, and if not, you know, she's had the best possible chance, yeah. That's a girl, good girl, Tilt. Hey, you're doing the breaths, right? Yes. Okay. She's doing really well. In Atlanta, Georgia, Arvid is ready to begin the tricky surgery to remove Tortoise Bedrock's badly damaged front leg. And we have our Doppler hooked up so we can hear her heart rates, which is uh, wow. very important. Because <laughs> it's not like I can put my stethoscope on there, so. I'm concerned, but I'm optimistic. Bedrock seems to be in good health, very strong girl. However, reptiles with anesthesia is very dicey. It makes you nervous, I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Okay, I'm cutting. Okay. So my goal is to get Bedrock home. I know how much she's loved by her family, so that's what I'm gonna do. Trying to do this surgery around the shell is just tough, so I'm trying to navigate with this shell in the way. Any recoil? She flinched. I don't know if I hit a nerve or... So because she's still flinching, when I hit certain spots, that tells me she's still feeling it. So we're gonna have to give her a little more sedation to try to get her, get her down to where she's not feeling this at all. So just still dissecting away here, trying to get down to the joint so that I can disarticulate this leg at the joint. It's just a very tight pocket. So it just makes it harder. So the problem is she's still twitching. So we're trying to get her to where she's supposed to be anesthetically. Arvid now has to administer even more sedative to ensure Bedrock is not aware of the intrusive surgery. This right here is why I don't do reptiles often. <laughs> okay, go ahead and lift up the leg. Yeah. I'm having a tough time finding joint space. So what I've decided to do is to saw the bone off cranially as I can, and I think that'll do the trick. Off. Then we can go ahead and start to close. So over the next few days, it's going to be very critical as to how Bedrock does from this surgery. We waited for her to go down with anesthesia, now we got to wait for her to wake up. And then tortoises, that can take a long time. So our work is not done. Guys, get ready, she might be going again. We brought her back twice now, but she might be going again soon. At Sash in Western Sydney. Fluid bolus, please. Alex and her team are still desperately trying to revive Lucy. Can we get a blood pressure as well on her? The young pup has a confirmed case of the deadly parvovirus and hopes are now fading with her heart stopping for a third time. Quite frequently we do CPR, we bring them back and then they re-arrest quite soon afterwards. Yep, she's gone. 
Despite everyone's best efforts, little Lucy has lost her battle against this terrible virus. We are very frustrated as vets because we always think that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. And these things could easily be prevented by making sure that your pets are fully vaccinated. So the whole hospital is now contaminated with parvovirus essentially. The, the suction will need to go. Parvovirus can't be passed on to humans, but humans can pass it on to other dogs. So now everyone must be vigilant. Chuck the intubies, we'll do a full restock. So we've had to lock off areas of the hospital while we do a deep clean to allow the virus to be killed so that we know that our hospital is safe again to start receiving sick patients. Four dogs with parvovirus were brought into SASH in the last 24 hours, and three of them, sadly, didn't make it. In an ideal world, we would see everyone's pets vaccinated unless there's a health condition that, that means that they can't be vaccinated. is a really tiny thing that we can do to prevent such a serious thing from happening. Okay, stem cells, all that work for some stem cells. Okay, she's still enjoying her tranquilizer and painkiller. Yeah. In Sydney's west, the stem cell preparation is finally ready to be injected into Portuguese water dog Matilda. Here we are. Thank you. I've been very good tilled. Rob and owner Robin are desperately hoping the treatment will slow the worsening bone disease in the 10-year-old's joints and spine. Okay. She's such a good girl. Good girl. Mm. While I'm here, she'll just trust you. She's very good. Really good dog. Well, they do love you, we know that. Your dogs will do whatever you tell them. Good girl, Tilt. Mm -hmm. Robin always comes in with her dogs. She loves them and she'll stay there to the, to the last moment, but she stays with them to keep them as calm as possible. And then she wants to be there when they wake up. That sort of owner that, you know, just absolutely loves her animals. And we're gonna put it, these stem cells where I saw all that degenerative spine. Such a good girl, Tilly. Oh. She's been so good. She gave a little shake. She's been good, but it She's hurts me more than it hurts her. I feel it every time it goes into her. I hate doing it. <laughs> good girl, oh. Tilled. I'm sure that hurt. Oh, good, Tilled. You did such a good job. Me? Hey, you're so brave. There you go. Mm. Just let her settle for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and if there's no reactions, she'll go home in about half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. So any concerns, just give call you a call. Call me straight away, don't yeah. hesitate. She's My job is to do the worrying. Yeah, yeah she's handled it just, pretty well. Just enjoy her and love her the way you do, that's fun. This will take three to six weeks to work, though I get surprised very often when I've done these stem cells, Within a couple of weeks, people saying, wow, I can already notice the difference. I thought, oh, no, you can't. And I look at the dog and think, yes, they can. Oh, good baby girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I hope that sore back of yours will feel so much better soon. Okay. Okay, leg is off. In Atlanta, Georgia, a relieved Arvid has safely removed Tortoise Bedrock's damaged leg, but he can't relax just yet. So with tortoises, they're slow to go fully down on anesthesia, but then waking up takes them just as long if it's not longer. So we're in for a long wait. So now we're about to do the prosthesis so that we can give some elevation to that area now that she doesn't have a limb to help with her mobility, prevent damage to the shell and help prevent injury and pain. So the arm will come here, so I'm yeah. thinking like right, it's maybe right like there. Because when I seen the wheels, they've all they been like here. right there. Okay. Set time of 15 to 25 minutes. So I'll put a prosthesis on her. Something that I made up with like a tennis ball. So I just hope she's able to keep it on for you know a good amount of time. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning, sunshine. 
So she's starting to recoil her head now. She has retracted it back into the shell, which means she's starting to come to. So she's finally giving us some reflexes here. As you can see, she's pulling in those feet right when we pull them out. She's giving us some resistance here. Bedrock's owner, Juliet, is keen to be reunited with her special girl. I'm excited to reunite Bedrock with her owner because I'm pretty sure her owner has been sitting on pins and needles all day. And she's going to be extremely happy to see Bedrock and not just see her, but very happy that she made it through the anesthesia. I know that was a big concern of mom's. Hi, my girl. Maybe she hear your voice. That might Hi, wake her up. Hi, sweet girl. Oh, my baby. Just got a little prosthesis to see how it kind of yes. elevates that shell. <laughs> yes. Do you think it'll have issue against some um, concrete? No, because that this slides. This slides great. This slides. Absolutely. Yep. This looks fantastic. Very ingenuitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Very grateful. Good. And if she is as well. Yes. I'm definitely very relieved that Bedrock is okay, and I'm just really grateful the surgery went well. All right, you have a good one. All right. All right, great. All right. Back in, in your box. <laughs> in Bondi, a surprise visitor has arrived at Kate's vet hospital. What's going on out here? You will soon find out. <laughs> Let me show you. We get loads of weird animals at this clinic, but um, in Bondi I haven't seen anything like this before. I'm intrigued, Elizabeth. You, you are going to love this. What have you got? <laughs> Let me have a look here. This is different. Oh! <laughs> Hello. How are you? Where did she come from? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> You've got an escapee chicken. <laughs> Where did you find her? Somebody found her down at the beach. Down at the beach? Down at the beach, on the road. The council just brought her in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Were you trying to cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? I have no idea why the chicken crossed the road, but he didn't get to the other side. I don't even know if Elizabeth knows that joke. So straight away, I can tell that you are a girl. This is a hen, not a rooster. And the reason I can see that with you is that your comb on the top is not as colourful as it would be as if you were a rooster. So you're giving me some clues. Kate's now concerned the little stray may be hurt, especially if she was trying to dodge traffic near busy Bondi Beach. She's in good health. Good. Bottom. All her legs feel like they're okay. Wings. Looking beautiful. Just walk this way. Okay, good. Walking well. Well, she seems to be in reasonably good health, Elizabeth. It's, she's very lucky that she hasn't actually been injured. I suspect, by the looks of her, that she looks like she has a home. Do we have any details, Elizabeth, about where she might have come from? No, nothing. Nothing? Let's make sure you weigh okay. 1.74. You're bigger than what we thought. She must be owned by someone. We just have to find your family. Where are they? Come on, Chook. Let's get you some food and some water. <laughs> Elizabeth's got some food here for you. I've got. Yay! <laughs> I don't actually know if she's even eating that. I think she's just making a mess of it. <laughs> no, you can't escape. You have to stay here. Elizabeth, have you called her anything? Nothing. I was waiting for you. Maybe we could call her Penny. She mustn't have been missing for very long. Yeah. Henny's in such good condition, Kate's certain she's someone's yeah, she pet. Eating, yeah. So it's now time to spread the word that this little runaway is safe and well. So it's probably not a bad idea we try and get some Facebook photos. Photo session with the chicken. Definitely has to be up there as the oddest thing that I've had to do at Bono Vet Hospital. Stray chicken. Do you want to say found crossing the road down at Campbell Parade? Okay, great. People are going to be like, how on earth did a chicken get down to Campbell Parade? Okay, ready? Yep. Go. It's post. Well, hopefully that does the trick. Hopefully we can find your owners. Yes, great. We found the chicken owners. Hello, you guys. 
Another chicken. Tiger. Tiger. So I've been calling the other chicken Penny, but it might not actually be her real name. What's her real name? Simba. Simba? Sama. Sama. Guess where she was found? Where? Down at Bondi Beach, crossing the road. <laughs> Two very excited little girls are overjoyed that Tiger's mate Summer is okay. And these two are friends? They're my sisters. Sisters! <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go and get Summer, you guys. Ready? <laughs> They're excited, I'm excited, everyone is excited. Hello. Oh! <laughs> and it looks like Summer is excited too. Look who I've got, you guys. Such a beautiful moment. The girls, as soon as they saw Summer, melts my heart. I love happy endings. Makes my job so worthwhile. The challenge for this family is gonna be keeping Summer from escaping again. So you guys, how are we gonna make it so that Summer doesn't escape anymore? We're getting a niche. Then. No, we're having a leash. A yeah, leash? We're getting them leashes. Leashes. Maybe some harnesses, chicken harnesses. And you can take them for walks that way. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. See Thank you later. Much. You're still happy. You're still happy. In Sydney, Matilda has a renewed spring in her step a month after her stem cell therapy to treat degenerative bone disease. You want me to play with you, I know you do. The 10 year old's legs no longer go from under her when she runs and her overall mobility continues to improve. Yes, well come on then we'll get it. Come on, let's go get your treat. Come on Bedrock. I don't have any strawberries, Laura. And Arvid's patient, Bedrock the tortoise, has made a remarkable recovery from amputation surgery. After losing her badly damaged leg and being fitted with a prosthesis, the seven-year-old is coping well, taking life one slow step at a time. Where are you going? <laughs> he wants to go explore, man. She wants to go explore. Hello, Bedrock. Hello. 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 If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.